we got somebody on there. They like, hey, okay, we laugh. <laughs> we are. Oh, your shirt, I love it. These are the shirts that I was telling you about that I had got done two months ago and I never picked them up. I love that. So yeah. Okay, let me put phone on do not disturb. So hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. We are live and in effect. <laughs> um, we're just going to allow a couple of you guys to come on in the room and then we will go ahead and get started. Um, so good afternoon. We hope that all of you all are having a good afternoon on this Tuesday. It's nice out here in Chicago. How is it down there in Georgia? Taylor. It's nice, but it's always nice in Georgia. But yeah, it's really, really nice. You can really like step outside and catch a breeze, and you just like, wow. But yeah, it's 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 really nice today. Very comfortable. I sat outside today on my porch and looked at the trees and caught a breeze. Like you said, it's just I'm, yeah. I'm just relaxed today. It's yes. one of those little yes. nice relaxing days on a Tuesday. Going up on a Tuesday. <laughs> So for those of you joining, we are talking about a specific topic today. Um, so we wanted to go over this <clears throat> trucker's tax that we'll go over. Um, and so if you guys are not in the trucking industry or if you're looking to get into the trucking industry, then this this live is kind of for you today. If not, then this topic you know, is not necessarily for you today. Uh, we definitely wanted to show the truckers some love in this industry. Um, Shayla and I are both um, moving more closer to this trucking industry niche. So we'll share some more information with you all um, coming soon uh, regarding that, how we're, how we're going to partner to help the truckers and the trucking industry dealing with your taxes and some other things. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, actually, we're going to also give you the text community because we are going to be doing a workshop together where we're going to be kind of going over some things with you all. And we also kind of want to know who out there is a trucker. So that way we can kind of gauge um, who you are. So that way we need to make sure we get your contact to follow up with you. Right. But today. Oh, I'm sorry. Also, let me just introduce myself. We do have. um another platform that we're streaming on today, which is uh, our YouTube channel, but as well as our other Facebook group page. So some of you guys may not necessarily know me. Um, hello, my name is Patrice L. Stewart. I am the realest tax and business strategist that you will ever meet. <laughs> and I have almost 18 years in the accounting, banking, tax, and finance industry. And I do own a company called the Tax Credit Academy, where we do tax preparation, business coaching, and consulting. And my lovely co-host here, Michelle Vanison, I will turn it over to her to introduce herself, and then we will go ahead and get started. Hey, what's up, everybody? So I am Michelle. I am the owner of Premier Tax and Financial Solutions in Atlanta, Georgia. I have over 12 years of tax and accounting experience. Um, I really, my focus is on businesses, but I love individuals as well. And I'm excited to talk to you guys about this trucker's um, tax return that's coming up and due. Um, so ready whenever you are, Patrice. Okay, let me just hit the live button on TikTok, and then we can go ahead and get started. All right. And then I'm also tell Catherine to get us a code for the truckers, and then okay. that way text us. <clears throat> okay. That way we can also um, make sure that we get in contact with their information. Okay, cool. Shirts that I was telling. All right. Okay. So I'm not, I'm like, I don't want to hold this up. All right. So the first thing that we're going to go over today with the truckers' taxes. Um, What I do with that sheet? <laughs> I can share it with you. You 
sent it in my um I shared it through Drive. The Drive. Okay, let me go back in there. Okay, I got it. Okay. Okay, so with this um tap with this with this particular one, it's called the Truckers. So it's the IRS reminding you guys that the uh, it's the truckers, the deadline for the pay for pay heavy highway vehicle use tax. Okay, so if you are a trucker and you are operating a vehicle that is over pretty much that's a gross weight of fifty five thousand pounds or more. All right. Um, your deadline to file this tax is Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. Okay. Um, there's two types of tax, as Michelle kind of explained to me, with which is a federal side and then there's a state side. So the first thing is we'll go over the federal. Um, and the federal is filing form 2290. Okay. So the form 2290, uh, the deadline again for that is August 31st of this month, right? Which is, we're coming up pretty, pretty quickly on that. <laughs> um, the tax period runs from July 1st to June 30th of each year. So for trucks and other taxable vehicles in use during July, the form 2290 and payments generally are due by August 31st. Um, state governments require a proof of payment of the highway use tax as a condition of vehicle registration. So that's on the state level, right? Um, and then what is this form 2290? So the form 2290 is used to report and pay the heavy vehicle UT for vehicles having a taxable gross weight of 55,000 pounds or more. Um or more that you operate on public highways. So it's used to figure and pay taxes for vehicles uh, with that taxable gross weight. And then also we are stating too that the form really should be, um, no, I'm gonna let you go over that part, Michelle, with the uh, time right. form. Okay. Uh, and then the other part that I just wanted to go over was with the form, it's also required when the ac acquisition of used vehicles is made for the current tax period. So the form itself, you may not know, but that's why you want to get with a tax professional to go ahead and just uh, process the form on the federal and the state side. Um, okay, I think that was my part, right, Shayla? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so as she said, the filing of that form is required when that acquisition of that used vehicle. Let me guys um, break that down what she means when she says use. So use means the use of a vehicle with power from its own motor on any public highway in the United States. A public highway is any road in the United States that isn't a private roadway. This includes federal, state, county, and city roads. So, for example, let's just say you purchased your heavy truck from the dealer and drove it over to the public highways to your home. The drive home was your first taxable use of the vehicle, right? So that's the difference uh, between those two when, it, when we're talking about use. So... Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about a little bit of documentation that you will be uh, needed that's kind of required because oftentimes most of most truckers, you guys know that this is a file that you need to you need to uh, a form that you need to file, but you don't know how to file it. And Patrice and I just discovered uh, when looking at this, um, it's better to file it electronically versus paper, um, because right now there's a delay uh, with processing the paper returns. So by the end of this um, this live, we hope that you've gotten enough information where you can reach out to us if you have not been doing what you're supposed to do and gotten that tax return filed on time. Uh, we want you to text this number that's going across the screen ASAP as soon as we get off the live so we can help you because, guys, there are penalties behind this if you don't file on time. So um, as she said, the deadline is 
quickly, fastly approaching on the 31st. So the following documentations um, is required when you file your form 2290. Um, it can be done by mail or online. But like I say, at this point, you better get with us so we can file it electronically. And what we would need is uh, your business name and address, your employer identification number, also known as your EIN. We'll need your VIN number or your vehicle identification number, the taxable gross weight of your truck, because after all, that's what it is. It's a heavy highway use return. So um, they're going to need the gross weight of it and the first um, your first used month of your trucks. Um, I will say that fleets with 25 or more vehicles, they you must pay the form. You must pay that form 2290 online um, through an IRS approved software provider. What that means is you go through someone like Patrice and I, and we have an authorized uh, an IRS author, uh, approved software provider. Smaller fleets have the option of paying this by a mail check or money order or online. But everything we represent today, guys, we want to just keep in mind, do it online. There's no need to do this by mail at this point because who's to say that they won't get it until after the deadline? We all know how slow the carriers can be as well as the IRS. So I would urge you to do this electronically, okay? Um, so who must... Um, Oh, I want to say this. You have to have an EIN for at least 14 days before you can e-file. So if you just got your EIN and it's um, less than 14 days, you may not be able to e-file. But I'm sure most of you truckers out there, um, you've got your business in order. And if you don't, um, we're going to come after you. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, who we gonna help you trap us. We're going to help you trap us. Yeah, we, we're going to help you out. We, we love you. Over here. <laughs> Shayla say we gonna come and get you <laughs> in a good way <laughs> in a good way so um all in a nutshell you know truckers you guys know but for those of you who don't know who must file um there's also another schedule that's attached to this why you really should seek out a, a tax professional um because you must file form 2290 and schedule one that's just a schedule that goes along with it for the tax period beginning on july 1st 2022 and ending on june 30th um 2023 uh if a taxable highway motor vehicle um is registered or required to be registered in your name under state uh, whether that be D.C., uh, Canada, or Mexican law at the time of its first use during the tax period and the vehicle has a taxable gross weight as we're going to keep referencing that 55,000 pounds or more. So you know if your truck weighs 55,000 pounds or more, we're talking to you, okay? Basically, so once again, anyone who registers a heavy highway motor vehicle in their name with a taxable gross weight of the 50, 55,000 pounds or more you have to file 2290 and pay the tax, okay? Um, for trucks operating uh, <clears throat> with a combined gross weight of 75,000 pounds or more, that fee will be about $550. That's just for when you're paying um, on that actual filing. Uh, for newly purchased trucks, the fee is due on the last day of the month following the first month of the use. Um, we're not really going to talk about the fees in here because everybody's situation is different. Um, and then uh, although this is more on the federal side, there are still some state things. So we don't want you to think that there's just one particular fee. Um, but that's just for those trucks weighing 75,000 pounds or more. Your fee just for that will be $550. Um, the federal government distributes the funds to states for highway construction and maintenance projects. That's what they do with those funds that they collect. All right. So um, let's say let me let me give you uh, two scenarios, Patrice. So let's say uh, someone comes to you and they say, well, what if I have a new vehicle? So they would want to know when and how do I, I, I pay in I file. So what you want to remember is you file and pay by the last day of the month. It's for August 31st following your purchase and use. So for example, if you bought and used a vehicle in September, then you want to file by the last day of October. 
you'll pay prorated taxes from October through June 30th. Um, then the next year you'll be synced with the usual filing of the July 1st through June 30th. So what that means is you got your vehicle later or after that June date, you're still going to have to pay a prorated fee. You may not have to pay as much, but it'll still be prorated. Um, and then another question, um, let's just say someone says, well, how many times a year do you file Form 2290, Patrice? So the answer to that is truckers should uh, report and pay this Form 2290 uh, tax return for their taxable vehicles every year. Um, as I stated earlier, that tax period usually begins uh, from July 1st and it extends until July 30th of the following year. So every trucker should file and renew their yearly heavy, uh, heavy use tax form within August 31st of every year. So that's why we're here today to, show, to let you know, please don't um, drag this out, guys. If, if you guys are on that road um, and or someone you know who may be listening, whether you have a family member, co-worker or whatever, and they drive trucks and you know that, you know, they're just always out there on the road. They don't really take care of a lot of their business and stuff. Let's help them to avoid these penalties and send them to us um, or send us a question that you may ask, um, because our goal is to try to educate you more on getting things filed on time so that you can avoid those penalties because Patrice, those penalties can really add up. Add up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We understand with a lot of truckers being on the road and not maybe necessarily keeping up with paperwork, right? We talk about this all the time for our business owners, um, that it's very important for you to be able to keep up with your paperwork and understand, which is why if you do not have the time this is why Michelle and I are on here to let you know that we are here to assist you, that we can work with you in doing uh, and filing your tax forms and your paperwork so that you can stay in compliance. OK, um, so if you guys um, do, does anybody have any questions right now at this particular moment with what uh, we went over? I do like too how you gave that example, Shayla, on um if it was a new vehicle and then how many times a year do they have to file this? So technically annually, just like all the other tax returns that we have to do for business, yeah. um, this one, cause I know some of those, um, and this is on the federal level. Remember annually, remember the state side is a different form that you have to fill out, which is I F T A. Right. Yes. That's the state side. Um, which, which, again, like she stated, every single state um, has different information and has different rules. But if you type in IFTA, um, and then it would pretty much come up. You can type in IFTA and then your state. And then that way it will take you straight to your state website as far as the forms that you have to formally fill out for this same tax, but on the state level. Is that, did I explain that correctly, Shayla? Yeah. Because you're, you're more... Yes, yes. Yeah, and that is going to be uh, the IFTA. Um, and some some people don't know, Patrice, that you, like you say, you have to go on the state side and, to, and actually go inside of there. So you guys actually have to create an account through your state. So I'm in Georgia, so mine would be the Department of, Re the Department of Revenue through Georgia. Um, you can't just go in there and just think that you can just find it or file it. You actually have to create an account with your state and then go in and do it. And it's really um, not difficult, but I would not do it on your own because what if you're putting some in there and you're underpaying or you're overpaying? So it's always good to be able to um, place that in the hands of a professional who can actually handle that and do that correctly for you. Um but um, if to also, I want to say, is a quarterly versus the 2290. And if you guys need some more information or for us to talk about the if that we can do that as well. Right. This particular one that we're kind of going over right now is yeah. the one that's due by federal, the IRS federal form, which is form 2290. Again, that's form 2290. And like Shayla said, um, this is not a form that you want to put in the mail. They're already behind with mail. Um, and you do not want to get into possible penalties and stuff added on to you. So you definitely want to work with an office that can electronically file you. 
as well. Both Shayla and I are both, um, as we said, e-file agents with the IRS where we can electronically file and submit your tax returns. Um, so that way you do want to, like I said, work with a professional. You don't want to just process this and send this in the mail with the deadline coming up so quickly. Yeah, I think uh, what we could do, Patrice, is put together like a ebook or something for our truckers. And we could put that, uh, put like a whole little ebook together for them with due dates and different things. That way, um, uh, if someone needed our services or whatever, we could, you know, gift that to them or something like that or, or put it. Oh, yeah, I like that idea. We could throw that together. Yeah. I like that. I'm writing that down. <laughs> okay. So, so far, we don't have any questions on either platform uh, okay. for this. Okay. And I want to point out really quick for this uh, heavy highway vehicle use tax return, this does apply to new or used vehicles. So, I want you to know just because you think you may have a brand new truck and you've done all that you need to do with everything else, this does apply um, to, to new trucks as well as used. Okay. It doesn't really matter. It's if you have a gross weight of 55,000 pounds or more, um, within 60 days of that purchase date, um, you, you do have to still file that form 2290. So I kind of figured there probably wouldn't be too many questions on this. Um, so guys in, like I say, if you're in the audience and you're listening and you may know some truckers, um, it will be a good uh, opportunity to pass this on to them to let them know that you have some information um, where people can assist them with not just this, but actually getting everything <laughs> in order for them, you know, um, because as Patrice stated, you know, those truckers, you guys are all on the road. You don't really have a lot of time to do anything except for manage your loads, you know, because a lot of times, Patrice, as you know, the truckers, as soon as they're dropping off a load, they're actually trying to figure out, OK, now I'm going to get my next load. You know, that's the goal of a trucker. You know, you're dropping off a load wherever I go. I got to go pick up another load. So you guys really don't have a lot of time to sit there and figure out, OK, a tax return. Right. So um, I absolutely love truckers. I love working with men. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Y'all yes. are some of the coolest people to work for, work with. Y'all don't give a lot of flack, whatever that fee is. I mean, you send it with no questions asked because you understand the value of what it is to have your business as a, as a truck owner and then also someone else handling the business within the business of your trucking business. So shout out to all the truck drivers out there across the world you are essential to us without y'all it's so many things we wouldn't have you know i got a new truck driver um client i said well, so what do you haul he said food he said i have chickens and basically uh here's a funny story he was going to i think like oklahoma or something like that and he got there um because some carriers can refuse loads if something is not right about that truck. If, they, if it's not locked or something, um, they can refuse the load. And something happened. And he basically, I think he had his truck weighed a lot. And they stopped him. And they, you know, wanted to check and see what you got. And he said, what you got in the back of that truck? He said, I got chickens. He said, well, I tell you what, this, <laughs> you come on through. Because we, <laughs> the, the state of Oklahoma, we need them chickens. <laughs> we need that chicken. <laughs> So thank y'all truck drivers because without y'all, there's so many things that we would not have. And we really appreciate y'all because y'all are really the MVPs on this highway, Seriously. you know, managing all these cars, swooping in and out of y'all. And y'all having to do everything you can to prevent accidents. So that's what Patrice and I want to do. Pour back into you guys, you know, by helping you with the financial aspects of your business. That's what it's really all about. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. So like I said, if you are a trucker and you are someone that needs assistance, whether it's filing your taxes, whether it's keeping up with your bookkeeping, whether it's um, whatever you need, let just text us, right? Text us. And then what we're going to be doing is a workshop um, where we're going to be talking to you guys um, about what we actually offer, what we can actually bring to the table um, to you as a business. 
Um, because again, like we said, especially when it comes to those of you all that are on the road, um, there is there is a lot that comes with dealing with this trucking industry. We know a lot of people push starting a trucking business, starting a trucking business, but a lot of people don't talk about the behind the scenes and a lot of the, um, what's the word I really want to say? Like, you know, they, they have a lot of red tape that they yeah. have to go through pretty much. Yeah, a lot um, of regulation. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and there are certain things that you need someone to kind of help manage you or remind you like, Hey, you know, this is coming up or, Hey, this is going on. Like now we're saying, yeah. don't forget you have this August 31st, this tax due. Um, and it's due by August 31st. So, um, and if you, if, if, is there anything else that you wanted to kind of go over today, Shayla, uh, you know, a, a, a outside tax topic outside of the, tr the trucking, what we're talking about right now. And I also think that maybe we should do a quick recap of what yeah. we talked about. We do have a couple of new people joining right now. We've been on for almost 30 minutes. So yeah, um, we could do a quick recap. Okay, I just want to shout out somebody, uh, the Empress Crystal. She said, uh, truckers here, I, if it's the, the Empress, that means you're a queen. So that means you, you, you're, you're one of us. So shout out to the Empress Crystal. She says, trucker here. Um, so I want to ask her a question really quick. I don't know if she's on, but what is your most challenging thing as a truck driver when it comes to your business in relation to payroll? bookkeeping or taxes i don't know if, if she's still on but i would love to know like what's her biggest challenge and then um the other thing that i wanted to add on uh was just basically safeguarding their personal information um you know because truckers you guys are on the road um and and a lot of times with a lot of you truckers you have a lot of paper <laughs> you know you have a lot of paper but let's just say somebody broke into your truck or, or whatever, let's say you do everything electronically. Um, I want you to train yourself to start setting passwords on your emails, um, people that, you know, uh, when you're sending your information to and from people, because I know sometimes, you know, you may um, have to send your socials or different things to different insurance providers, different, um, you know, just whoever in your lane of, of trucking, just make sure you're safeguarding your, your, identi your identity um, scammers are on alert. You know, I know that there are a lot of truck stops where, you know, you just have all kind of weirdos sometimes there. Um, I'm sure, uh, the Empress Crystal as a woman, she could probably relate, you know, to some horror stories that we all hear about, you know, truckers are even, can even become prey too. So, um, that's what I would just want to add, just safeguard yourself, protect yourself and, um, just go from there. I like that tip. I like that tip. So she hasn't responded just yet. We'll see if she comes back in the comments. Um, in the meantime, while we are waiting on the Empress to respond to Shayla, um, if there are any truckers on, and even if you guys come on and you're watching this video later on, you can still leave that comment. Um, this channel does stay up on YouTube. So we do keep the video and the content up on YouTube and you can always go back and comment and we'll, you know, watch it and make sure that we kind of keep up with it. So that way. And then also I would definitely recommend you texting truckers to 312-680-5468. Again, if you text truckers to 312-680-5468, uh, we can let you know the next time we're going to do this workshop. Uh, which is going to be Shayla and I hosting this workshop to kind of talk to you guys about the trucking industry um, and how you working with us, you will be in a way better advantage uh, than a lot of other people when you get a professional in your network. Um, if also right now, we'll just do kind of a quick recap of what we did talk about. Um, so pretty much what we decided to come on today was to go over and give you all information regarding the um, heavy highway vehicle use tax. Um, this is a kind of two-part tax. So one is for federal and one is for on the state level. The form that we're talking about today is the IRS federal form, which is form 2290. And again, um, that form is due by August 31st. That is the deadline. And so this is for 
Um, it is an annual tax on heavy highway motor vehicles operating on public highways with a taxable gross weight of 55,000 pounds or more. So if you do operate a vehicle that is 55,000 pounds or more, then this tax is for you. Um, again, kind of gathering some information that you would need in order to file the information properly is we would you would need your employer identification number. Um, as Shayla said, if it's less than 14 days, it would need to at least be 14 days old for it to be able to be filed electronically. Uh, we would also need your vehicle identification number. And then we would also need the taxable gross weight of each vehicle. Um, again, that form, we, sh we recommend you electronically filing, especially with the deadline coming up as early as next week. Um, you do need to work with a professional like myself or Michelle, and we can also get your forms filed for you electronically as well. Um, and then there are several ways that you can also make the payment. If you do end up on the tax, they do, um, the IRS does accept forms of payment in credit or debit card, electronic funds withdrawal, um, and then also through their federal tax payment system. So many of you guys who are used to kind of paying taxes on your business, many of you may already have that uh, payment system. You can pay through the payment system and then you can send check or money order in the mail. But as again, we are not recommending that you send the IRS anything in the mail right now. Um, there is so much, um, you know, already backed up. And so we don't recommend that. So we do recommend you working with a reputable company that could send everything off electronically. Two things I forgot to mention, Patrice. Um, you can claim a suspension from the tax uh, when a vehicle or let's just say your truck is expected to be used 5,000 miles or less during the period that I talked about, that, um, that, that period. So once again, you can claim a suspension from the tax, which you will be responsible for when the vehicle is expected to be used 5,000 miles or less. I don't see that happen for the average truck driver, but I want to let you know because some trucks do go down. Um, you cannot actually claim a credit for tax paid on vehicles that were destroyed, stolen, sold, or used 5,000 miles or less as well. Now, if you have an agricultural vehicle, because this applies to you too, that will be 7,500 miles for any of you out there that's on the agricultural side. So I wanted to let people know um, that you can claim a credit uh, for taxes on the vehicles if that was destroyed, stolen, sold, or used that have 5,000 miles or less. And you can claim suspension from the tax when that vehicle is expected to be used 5,000 uh, miles or less. Now you said that's an extension. Suspension. Suspension. They can suspend it. Yeah. Yeah. Only if that vehicle has been used 5,000 miles or less. Okay. Which the average truck driver is not going to apply, but you know, we do know that there are some truck drivers, let's say that this is their first year starting out. They may not have a whole lot of capital behind their back. Let's just say something happens to that truck. They don't have the money to fix the truck. I know truck drivers, like they go back home, you know, because until they can get their money back right to get that vehicle fixed. So they would be, let's say if they, they didn't drive that truck for 5,000 miles or more, then they can suspend, they can claim a suspension from the tax that they would normally typically have to pay simply because they didn't use because that's what this is it's a heavy highway use it's based on the use that you're using the vehicle um so if you if you didn't use it or if your truck was destroyed stolen or whatever and there were five thousand miles or less you can claim a suspension from that tax if it was destroyed you can claim a credit from the tax paid on on the vehicle okay and i'm glad you did bring that point up because i have seen a couple of people uh posts like the truck on the side of the road one of my homeboys he always unfortunately having the problem his boat truck was bur burning up on the side of the highway I'm yeah. like, Ooh, like you know so yeah I, i've had that and i want to point out in the workshop that you mentioned we're gonna have 
uh, some actual uh, places, lenders, where, where they can apply for funding, for business funding to help them because that you're absolutely right. I do run into some truckers and like you say, they, you know, because I'll be honest with you, Patrice, a lot of people are buying used trucks mm -hmm. because newer trucks right now are very oh, expensive. Yeah. Two, three years ago, they weren't, but when the pandemic came in and all of these things, new brand new trucks are two three hundred thousand mm. dollars as opposed to the used truck that that's hundred thousand dollars less so we understand y'all trying to get out there get your bag get to the money but you know we'll be able to help you provide you with some funding some um some resources for business funding for you truckers out there yep yep and as well as if again if you're interested in getting into the trucking industry we'll talk about that a little bit too um in the workshop because i do have a box truck business um and so yeah so there's money in trucking right you don't always have to have the big rig the cdl um so this you know that workshop will kind of go into that as well a little bit um but yeah i think uh, Brenda, so yes, we, we are wrapping up, but it's okay. You can definitely catch the replay uh, when you can. <laughs> and we haven't got anything so far from the Empress, so she's probably okay. on the road uh, and, and can come back. So the Empress, whenever you get a chance, just come back whenever you can and comment and let us know, um, you know, what, what, what was the question again, Shayla? Because that's a good question. Like what is her what is the what are the most challenges she faces as a truck driver on the road as it pertains to um her tax, you know, taxes, payroll, bookkeeping, this okay. actual tax form, the if the like what is her, you know, any truck driver, what is your most what are your challenges that you're facing, which we said it, you don't have the time to do this. So um, that, but that was the question of what, what challenges does she face as a trucker, particularly as a female trucker? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I like that question. We'll come back on and see. So okay. we will, um, we'll be back on again this week. I'm going to see if you want to come on tomorrow, Shayla. For, yeah, I'm down. I'm yeah, down. For, uh, uh, okay, so we'll be back on tomorrow then for Wednesday for our lunch and learn um, that we do. We'll just give you guys a snippet though, because this one is for Wednesdays are the lunch and learn with the lab. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, we'll also be back on for Finance Friday's hot topics of the week, right? So on Friday, we update you all on the latest and greatest of what happened the current week. Um, so as we're still having events and things coming out, we'll update you on that topic that we'll be going over on Friday. But we'll both jump on tomorrow and uh, we will be on to do our lunch and learn for the lab. So if we don't have any other questions today, which I'm not seeing anything, we'll give you guys about another minute before we go ahead and count down. But um, and we knew that this live wouldn't be as interactive as the last ones because everyone's not in the trucking industry. <laughs> so this this topic today was kind of I always get messed up with that word specific <laughs> specific with the industry, right? So um, today this is definitely a, a, a truckers industry topic. Yeah. Oh, Patrice, I got some CB lingo words and phrases I just found. So truckers, here we go. <laughs> 10 for Roger. That means yes. Back door means behind your truck. Somebody who's behind you like the woo woo. So I didn't know that back door. Truckers, when they say badass, that means very cool. If they say bear, that means cop. Yeah, catch you on the flip flop, see you on the return trip. <laughs> That's what that means. Chicken coop means way station, and chicken lights is extra lights on a rig or a trailer. So I got me some truck and lingo today. <laughs> I like that. So if we hit them say bear, that means cop. cop yeah. <laughs> I would have never thought that bear or would be that door. <laughs> Yeah, you want to know something that's so funny? Because, guys, I'm, I'm country. You probably hear the accent. So I was raised in Mississippi. 
And my grandmother, she couldn't drive, Patrice. She, she never drove. My grand, my grandfather, he drove us everywhere. And if we would see like a trucker coming down the highway real fast, and we know we just saw a police officer, my grandmother would say, Jack, Jack, flash your life, flash your life. They're going to give him a, a ticket. So that was my thing. My grandmother, she was like, she was like the silent, like, okay, I'm going to look out for y'all cars and trucks. like, flash them lights. So right. that's a, I don't know if people in the city do that when they see the popo. But when we see the popo, we flick them lights and then everybody else go, hey, slow your ass down. <laughs> ah, that is too cool. That's too cool. Grandma say, look, we're going to look out for the people. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, now that flickering of lights might be something else. But yeah, back in the day, that's why if you saw somebody flickering your lights and you saw police, that's what that meant. Slow your ass down. <laughs> and being in Chicago, I def I don't know offhand, but I know that flicking the lights definitely means something it else. Means like something that. else now in this new generation. Yeah. So don't stop. You see flickering lights now, you better keep going. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Oh, right. uh, okay. I like that. I like that. That was cool. So yeah, we don't have any questions. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So guys, if you think of any questions, just go into the YouTube channel um and just put your questions there. You know, we'll be able to answer them for you. And then if you do need to get in contact with Michela, this is Michela's booking link. So you can go ahead and Go ahead and jot that information down right now or take a screenshot or whatever you need to do um, to make sure that you take her link and her contact information. And then I'll put up my link after that. Um, and then again, like we said, if you are a trucker at all, text us truckers to 312 Six eight zero five four six eight. We have an upcoming workshop for you that we will send you the link to register. It's a completely free workshop um, to kind of give you guys a lot of information and update you on some ways that you can take advantage of working with two professionals in the game. <clears throat> That's here to kind of look out for you, right? Um, and then give you some of these things that you need to remember <laughs> in this tax industry and, and just being in business, period, right? We want to make sure that you guys are set up to win and that you're not allowing the little things. Because usually the, the biggest things we see in business, it's the little things that shut people yeah. down. It's the yeah. little things. And it's yeah. usually paperwork. Yeah, yeah. Just knowing those those deadlines and dates could save you guys hundreds of thousands of dollars from penalties. And then that is my contact information. I'm going to take the phone number off because they just really need the link. Okay. And then that's my information. My booking link is there. And then that's it for today, you all. We are wrapping up and we will see you again tomorrow. Uh, we will get on around, we usually do lunch and learn around noon. Um, but I want to say, I think I have something scheduled. So we'll be on around one o'clock tomorrow, Central Standard Time, two o'clock PM um, Eastern Time. All righty. All right. So thank you all for joining today. And again, if you do um, have a question or comment, leave it here on the post on the page. Let us know that you're watching the replay and then we will come back and answer those. And then again, we want you to make sure that you get on the text community link for those of you guys who are truckers in the trucking um, and get in this trucking workshop. Again, text truckers to 312 680 Five four six eight, and have a great afternoon. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.